I got to get this thing recorded because we want to preserve it for posterity. Janice Niederhofer is on the line with us this morning. Janice, you were in law enforcement for how many years? They're uh, just shy of 30. 30 years. 30 mm-hmm. years in law enforcement. Our conversation with Janice brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. She's in the San Francisco area, so she's getting up very, very early to talk with us this morning. Janice, all those years in law enforcement, and uh, of course you have the opportunity, uh, therefore, or the responsibility of dealing with a number of folks who misbehave. And (laughs) I'm putting that charitably. Um, Thank you. These days, there are a lot more people, it seems anyway, who are misbehaving behind the wheel of a car and it's putting others at danger. And we have to find a way to get to the bottom of this, don't we? For sure. And Todd, you're right. It's not, it's not seemingly they are. There's so much misbehavior behind the wheel. It's, it's just really simply crazy. I mean, I bet you've been seeing it as well, right? Oh, yeah. You see it every day. Um, and mm-hmm. uh, and and I don't know the reasons why it seems to have escalated so much. I, I had a behavioral expert on yesterday, uh, and he was talking about the fact that, um, you know, with social media being, and, and we tend to blame everything on social media these days, but social media has emboldened a bunch of people who never would have acted the way that they're acting now. Behavior is just... Uh, uh, it's it's not adult, as mom and dad used to say. Oh, there, you know, this is a complex issue, right? Human mm-hmm. behavior and what's happening out there in the world. And your human behavioralist yesterday was correct. And there's so much more. But social media, yes, we blame it. But it is allowing people to have voices they never have and hide behind a screen. So it's getting louder and louder and meaner and meaner out there and disrespectful. Yeah, it is. And and then you add in the pandemic and what that did to us psychologically. Um, and, and here comes the inflationary times in which we're living now and, and the prices of everything are going up. And we've got a lot of stress in our lives and we're not handling it well. That's correct. And um, we think on the unconscious, we process, I should say, on the unconscious level, 93 to 98% of all of our behavior in our brain. So just imagine all the things you just mentioned, Todd, Mm -hmm. and then pile on top, you know, climate change, yes or no, all the natural disasters, medical, mass shootings, you just name it, politics, for goodness sakes, people are, you can't turn any direction and not get this information. And so it's sitting in our unconscious brain, and then we're handling our day-to-day activities with our family, our friends, our work, our health, our this, or that. And then we get behind the wheel. Now, what do you think you're going to do? Yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and I, I, think, I think one other factor that we need to consider is the fact that um, we hear so much about um, law enforcement, um, the law enforcement community not being respected anymore uh, and uh, law enforcement itself being pursued in a different way these days that uh, maybe people think I have to take things into my own hands. And so behind the wheel of a car that gets especially dangerous. Hmm, interesting perspective. Um, that's what my nonprofit works with, right? The mistrust between law enforcement and communities they serve. And that's a percentage of people that are out there for sure. But we've been, I'm going to use your word of earlier, we've been emboldened to um, take things in our own hands now through, well, everything you turn to, social media and politics and everything else. We've been emboldened to take control, to speak up, to act out, to let our opinion be known, be right, right? So in this case with road rage, do you want to be right or do you want to be safe? Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you want to live to see another day? Yeah, or or stand on, as they say, die on that mountain um, uh, or that hill. Uh, so, Janice, what is the best way? What should we do when we're confronted by somebody who's very, very aggressive behind the wheel and, and acting threatening toward us? Okay, so there's different levels. So let's take it to the level you just said, getting very threatening. So a friend of mine was driving down a highway accidentally. We've all done it, cut somebody off, and, you know, she apologized with all five fingers, you know, with an apologetic look, and mm-hmm. he didn't care. He got right in her bumper all the way down. Can you imagine going the speed limit on a highway, he followed her off the highway into her town 
and just would not leave her alone. So she went into a main boulevard, which is what she wanted to do, where there's lots of people, lots of traffic, lots of light, lots of attention, because they're not going to want to do anything in front of anybody, right? Mm -hmm. And then usually they'll just leave. Or if it got really bad, like with her, she had to drive to a police department, pull in the parking lot, and then he peeled off and left. Okay? Yeah. Yep. So the first thing you want to do is don't engage. For goodness sakes, don't pull over and engage. No, no, that's a no-no. Yeah. Okay? There was a driver in your area that pulled off. He was with his two children under 10 and his wife, and he was in the fast lane. Guy cut him off, so he went and actually tagged his car, got in a little accident, so he went to pull off. The victim pulled off onto an exit, and here comes this guy. And instead of pulling off to exchange information... He shot at the family. Mm. Yeah. You know, this is this is how the, cra- the crazy times are getting. Yeah, I think one of the things that uh, we need to understand as well, especially if we have children, is they're watching uh, and they're seeing our behavior and uh, they're figuring it's okay for dad, it's okay for me. Absolutely, we're role models. So when we get in a car and we feel ourselves getting steamed up under the collar, Mm-hmm. Future pace yourself. Think about your children, your wife, your job, things that are important to you. Put a picture of your family, your loved ones on the dashboard so it reminds you to behave when you get heated behind the wheel, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And uh, and I love the advice. Uh, to get to a, a place where there are a lot of people around and where people just uh, don't feel that uh, they'd better um, act up. Uh, in in such a way, uh, because they're no longer anonymous then, are they? That's right. And there are people who will go beyond that because their egos are so big and they want to be so right. And I happened to be with another retired agent when we were just off goofing around one morning, going to do something that day, and we pulled into this shopping center to go have breakfast, and here comes these two cars into the lot. Mm-hmm. Now, there's not a lot of people around, but there were people around. We were there, and we were getting something out of the trunk, and these two cars were going at it, and um, I just, it was on rolling, it was just at playing right in front of my eyes, so I looked over at her, and she knew what I was going to do, so I walked right up in between them. Now, I don't expect anybody out there to do that, but I'm trained to do that, right? Mm-hmm. But the point is, they were so egotistic, both cars had to be right, and it was only over a little bit of road rage, and they weren't going to stop. It was pretty crazy, and I know they would have escalated if I wasn't there. Yeah, I think if we all realize that I could I could walk away from this or drive away from this in this case, and it won't make a difference in the whole world, and we can both get on with our lives, or I can actually change my life forever uh, by making one boneheaded mistake. Uh, and, uh, and so, yeah, yeah, we, we need to get level headed about ourselves. So Janice, you have this organization, humankind Alliance. What is it all about? You mentioned it a couple mm. of moments ago. Mm-hmm. Well, you know how the, we have spoken about the trust has disintegrated between law enforcement and communities they serve. Yeah. We have trainings and program and educational programs where we train law enforcement and communities together. And everything that we train, they get to train with us. And so we get to change the psychological paradigm of both sides and educate the nation on that we're one community. There's no difference between somebody carrying a badge and somebody who's not. We all have families or grandparents, sisters, brothers, and we have to work together as one community, right? Mm-hmm. One may pick up a scalpel and be a surgeon and one picks up a badge in order to be a law enforcement person. We have to come back together and solve these problems. And that's what we're doing. So you're putting on the other person's shoes, actually, in your case, putting on the other person's badge a little bit, huh? Absolutely. And by- well, it sounds like a wonderful approach. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so, so tell me uh, how people can uh, learn more about it. I'm, I'm sure that you've got social, right? Uh, yes. And it'll be getting a little more, um, what do you say, active, because, you know, I worked so many years undercover. Social media, we were talking about earlier, right, was mm-hmm. not my thing. <laughs> it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so don't expect a lot when you first go there, but then go to humankindalliance.org, mm-hmm. humankindalliance.org. 
And uh, I actually will be launching here shortly a mass shooting prevention guide for civilians because we have to help law enforcement. They can't do it all on their own. We have to be the eyes and ears and start stopping some of these mass shootings. Yeah, yeah. Um, We saw that uh, footage of the brawl on the pier there a couple of days ago. And uh, when you've got 100 people that all of a sudden a big massive brawl breaks out and you've got four police officers, then... uh, that's not a good formula for success there for breaking this up. So, so you're right about that. Uh, we need yes. To, we we need to all calm down a little bit and uh, think about the the ultimate of where's this all all going to end up, and uh, and maybe by that way we'll we'll do away with road rage and uh, some of these other things that are afflicting our society. Janice, thank you so much for the visit this morning. What's it like in San Francisco today? Well, it's still dark, so I can't tell, but I think it'll be about 71 degrees when it does light up out there. How about that? I'm used to, <laughs> I'm used to talking to people down Dallas way where they're at 110 every day, and we're, we're going to be on the way to 80 today here in Pennsylvania. So you enjoy your 71-degree day. I will, and you, you're 80, and I appreciate you, Todd. Hey, thanks so much, Janice. Have a wonderful day. You as well. Bye for now. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, WCCSradio.com.